You've probably heard the Sky Boat song. I'm hoping most Scots know about Flora MacDonald taking Bonnie Prince Charlie over the sea to Sky. But have you ever wondered what happened to her after that? This video is for you. Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi. If you're interested in the people, events and places in Scottish history, then subscribe to Scotland History Tours and click the bell symbol to be notified of new videos. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. It's the 27th of June and it's the anniversary of Flora MacDonald taking Bonnie Prince Charlie over the sea to Skye on his escape route back to France. Now, I assumed that everyone had heard the story of Flora MacDonald and how she ended up in a boat with a pantomime dame in the middle of the night in a Hebridean waters in June 1746. But last night, my 27-year-old son said that he'd never heard of Flora MacDonald. And he lives with me! Can you do me a favour? In the comment section below, just say yes or no to let me know if you knew the story of Flora MacDonald helping Bonnie Prince Charlie to escape on a boat to Sky. In the comment section of the YouTube video, okay? If you don't know the background and the detail to that story and how it all happened, if you let me know in the comment section, if enough people are interested, then I'll definitely put that in a list of videos to make. However, uh, today, I thought I'd tell you what happened to Flora MacDonald after this day in Scottish history. And that's why today I'm at Dunstaffinish Castle, just outside Oban. Now, if you haven't been to both of these places, then you should go and hopefully this video will give you a wee taste. Now, Having rescued Bonnie Prince Charlie from the Hanoverian state on the 12th of June 1746, Flora was arrested as she made her way to a solicitor. Somebody had grasped. And she was put on a prisoner ship called the Furnace. And here at Dunstaffinage was one of the several stops on the way south to the Tower of London. Whoa. A previous stop had been in Armadale on the south side of Skye where the ferry stops now. And there, Flora was taken by escort for one visit to her mother. And one of the conditions set by the English-speaking authorities was that she was under no circumstances to converse in Gaelic. Now think about that for a minute. Culloden has just been lost. And in the fever pitch of the Duke of Cumberland's butchery in the Highlands, you're a young lassie in the hands of the same British army committing unimaginable atrocities, torture, rape, theft, murder, under the flag that will become known as the Butcher's Apron. Many traitors like you will be hung, drawn and quartered. You have no idea what lies ahead. You're allowed one last visit with your mother but you're not allowed to speak in her tongue. After Dunstaffinage, Leith, and then finally London, to the tower with the other traitors. Now they tell me that Flora's strength of character and attractiveness of visage and spirit meant that she did much better than most. Remember, to London Jacobites, she was a celebrity to be visited. She was even visited by the Prince of Wales, the heir to the throne, the elder brother of the Duke of Cumberland. Can you imagine? And to him, she said of her aid to Bonnie Prince Charlie, I would have done the same thing for you if I'd found you in distress. That actually sounds a wee bit rude, doesn't it? <laughs> a year after she was captured on the 4th of July, 1747, a general amnesty was declared and Flora and others were released to go home. Now, living in Scotland as a Sky celebrity has a sting in the tail. I know, when I was at school they always told us that alliteration of S sounds like snakes. But there's no need for fangs when there's venom and envious tongues. You can imagine how many fishwives there were in Skye. And the Jacobite heroine returning from London was both jealously guarded and regarded with jealousy. Her marriage to Alan, another MacDonald, made the Scots magazine of the day. But all celebrity comes with a price. And so did land in the highlands as people made way for sheep. She and Alan tilled the land with sweat and tears and attempts at improvement. But eventually, they, like so many others, made another boat trip over the sea to the Carolinas. 
Now in 2020, with the success of Outlander, Jamie and Claire Fraser are probably the most famous inhabitants of the Argyll colony in the Carolinas. But in the closing months of the real 1774, it would have been Alan and Flora MacDonald. Now, you're probably wondering, what was going on in the American colonies in the 1770s? Well, imagine the post-Jacobite rebellion in Scotland during the Highland Clearances was a bit like a frying pan, say. And let's say the colonial Americas were like, I don't know, a fire. And the space in between was the Atlantic. Well, Alan and Flora sailed from Campbelltown in August 1774 on the two-month journey to the colonies. And halfway through that journey, as they enjoyed the pleasures of an 18th century cruise in the Atlantic, something else from the Buffy Mom. In September 1774, the First Continental Congress convened and it endorsed the proposal of another Scotsman called John Adams that Americans would resist all taxes in disguise and boycott all British goods from December 1774. Welcome to the Americas, Flora. You'll be picking a side then. She would narrowly avoided losing her head while trying not to pick sides during the Jacobite counter-revolution. Why on earth would you want to pick a side in the American Rebellion? Now, if you're wondering why a glorious day on the Auburn Promenade has changed to a wet day in Perthshire, somebody forgot to press the record button and when I find out who it was, what I was about to say was that I've always found it surprising how Scots, and Highlanders in particular, came down to the side of the British Crown during the American Rebellion. Rebellion, revolution, the semantics are important for keeping our American cousins in their place. Some say that we were a people who liked order and tradition. Others make the point that for three generations, Highlanders had tried to stand against the British state. And where did it got them? The banning of the kilt. That's my next video. Uh, the decimation of their culture, the loss of their lands and the death of their sons. This time, let's be on the winning side for once. So when the revolution, sorry, rebellion started, Alan MacDonald became an officer in the forces of the British Crown and Flora went out as a recruiting sergeant for the regime that only a few years before had locked her in the Tower of London. At the Battle of Moors Creek Bridge, Flora's husband and son survived, but they were both captured and they spent a large part of the war as prisoners. She, as a woman alone, fending off the raids, attacks and intrusions of their neighbours, the American revolutionaries. Did you know that in Thomas Jefferson's original draft of the American Declaration of Independence, the Scots were singled out for contempt and they were named the line was removed, possibly with the influence of John Witherspoon or John Adams, the guy who we mentioned earlier, who was Scottish. In 1778, Flora had to drop everything and escape by ship when a short-term flag of truce was raised in Wilmington, North Carolina. Once more, she sailed over the sea, this time to Canada. And what was left of the MacDonald family, like so many other Highlanders persecuted by the revolutionaries, regrouped in Canada. But these were harsh times in a harsh land. Now they'd left hardships in the Hebrides, but the American experience had taken a heavy toll. Dreams crushed in the Carolinas, and then one Nova Scotian winter, and Flora, she just wanted to go home. She took a boat over the sea to Skye. Her husband Alan stayed on for a while in Canada till the end of the war. He'd hoped to make a new start with the compensation that he was due for his losses fighting for the British Crown. Now, you might be surprised to know that the British state dragged out the compensation claims and payments were paltry when they finally came. And so two elderly Skianachs found themselves back in their island without the wherewithal to make a new life, but with the health complications that had come from years of fighting for and against being imprisoned both for and by the British state. Their sons had fought and some had died in the service of that state. 
Their one good fortune was that their son Johnny had done well enough working as a surveyor for the British government in India that he could send back a pension that kept his parents in their faltering years. Now don't get me wrong, whilst the British state showed itself ungrateful to those who carried its banner, Bonnie Prince Charlie died in 1788 with much self-pity but little expression of gratitude to the young woman who risked all to take him over the sea to sky 42 years before. And now an old woman, our passing too, brought the lamenting of the pipes two years later. Our grave's a regular tourist attraction right next to the Museum of Island Life at Kilmuir. It's a beautiful spot and well worth a visit. Our memorial's engraved with the words of Samuel Johnson, no Jacobite or even a Scotophile. He said, her name will be mentioned in history and if courage and fidelity be virtues, mentioned with honour. In Flora Macdonald's time, the two biggest events in the island of Skye were her wedding and her funeral. Now, she's even revered in the Carolinas. I hope you've been entertained and informed by this wee video. Uh, most of my customers, for whatever it is that I do here, come from word of mouth. Now there's two ways that you can spread the word. One is by giving a thumbs up on YouTube and any other platform you've come from. The other is to share the video. Uh, it's a bit like passing out my card. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, then please click that button and the notification bell to be notified when new videos come out. I mean, Dorcas can be la my life. Cheerio and Rasta.